Welcome to Protecting Adults 65 and Older Against Influenza, the Flu, an educational program created to help you protect yourself against the influenza virus. Although anyone can get the flu, this infection is particularly serious and potentially deadly in older adults, persons of any age with underlying medical complications, and young children. This video will focus on adults 65 years of age and older and how to best protect them. Influenza, commonly known as the flu, is a contagious respiratory illness. The two main types of influenza viruses that infect humans are the influenza A and influenza B viruses. Influenza A and B viruses mainly circulate during the fall and winter in Canada, which is why we say influenza is seasonal. Influenza symptoms can range from mild to severe. Symptoms usually include the sudden onset of fever, cough, and muscle aches and pains. Other common symptoms may include headache, chills, loss of appetite, fatigue, sore throat, runny nose, and nasal congestion. Some individuals may experience diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting. Most people who become infected with influenza recover and have no symptoms after 7 to 10 days. However, the cough and fatigue from an influenza infection can persist for weeks. Some individuals, including older adults and persons with underlying medical conditions, may also experience severe complications. The influenza virus is spread from one person to another by droplets, such as those in a cough or a sneeze. The influenza virus can also be spread indirectly. Because it can live for up to 48 hours outside of the body, this virus can be contracted from surfaces such as telephones, computer keyboards, doorknobs, and toys. Don't forget that unwashed hands and kitchen utensils can also transmit the virus. Once you have become infected with influenza, you are contagious starting from the first day before you experience symptoms and remain contagious for approximately five days after your first day of symptoms. Although there are some antiviral medications available to treat the flu, these need to be given very early on in the infection. Oftentimes, it is too late, as, in general, most people seek medical attention once their symptoms have lasted a few days, and at that point, antiviral medication may not be helpful. In some situations, such as in retirement or long-term care homes, Antiviral medications may be given to prevent infection when there is an influenza outbreak. Whether a person will benefit from antiviral medications depends on the individual situation. This is best determined by your healthcare provider. If a person does develop influenza, the treatment includes rest, drinking plenty of fluids, and medications as needed for fever and pain, such as acetaminophen. Antibiotics are not effective against the influenza virus. Also, if anyone has influenza, they should avoid contact with adults 65 or older, young children, and people with chronic underlying medical conditions, all of whom are most at risk for developing influenza-related complications. The best approach is prevention, which can be achieved by getting an influenza vaccine, commonly known as the flu shot. The 2022-2023 influenza season in Canada began on August 28, 2022. Adults 65 years of age or older have the highest flu-related hospitalization and death rates. The 2022-2023 season was no exception, as the rate of admissions among this age group began to increase steeply in early November 2022, peaking at the end of 2022. Hospital admission rates remained very high until well into April 2023. In fact, during the 2022-23 flu season, persons 65 years of age or older had the highest rate of hospitalizations in Canada due to influenza. According to the Public Health Agency of Canada, or PHAC, there were more than 72,000 reported and confirmed cases of the flu and over 4,000 hospitalizations during this time. Adults 65 and older accounted for 31% of ICU admissions and 76% of the reported 273 flu-associated deaths. Many people are unaware of the potentially significant impacts of influenza on older adults, 
in addition to increased hospitalization and death rates. These serious effects, which can continue long after infection and or hospitalization, include loss of independence and worsening of frailty or pre-existing weakness, influenza infection and or hospitalization in adults 65 and over can have potentially debilitating impacts, such as worsening of frailty or pre-existing weakness, significant disability, including lower limb strength loss, and being temporarily housebound or bedbound. Sadly, these effects can lead to loss of independence, social isolation, decreased quality of life, and increased susceptibility to other infections. Influenza can worsen pre-existing medical conditions such as heart and lung conditions, kidney disease, and diabetes. Additionally, adults 65 and over with influenza have a higher risk of suffering a heart attack and stroke up to several weeks after an influenza infection. As you can see, influenza can be very serious in older adults. For this reason, the current national immunization guidelines recommend the influenza vaccine for all adults 65 and older, as they are at high risk for influenza-related complications, hospitalization, and death. Also, healthy people of any age living with persons with chronic illnesses such as a heart condition, asthma, diabetes, or cancer, and or with adults 65 and older, should receive an influenza vaccine in order to avoid spreading the influenza virus to them. Each year, different strains or types of influenza viruses arrive in Canada. In most cases, we can accurately predict which strains will arrive each season and prepare a vaccination to prevent that specific influenza infection. Usually, the influenza vaccine contains three to four different strains of the virus. Because the virus strains change every influenza season, a different vaccination is needed every year. In other words, last year's vaccine will not protect against this coming season's strain of influenza virus. This is why the flu vaccine needs to be given every year. The influenza vaccine, commonly known as the flu shot, is usually given in the fall season, sometime between October and December, so people can be protected during the typical influenza season, November to March. It takes up to two weeks for the vaccine to take effect, the protection lasts for about six months. Influenza vaccines available for adults 65 and older use an inactivated, which means killed, version of the influenza virus. This means you cannot get influenza from the vaccine itself. They are given as an intramuscular injection. As you can see, people 65 years and older are at increased risk of developing serious complications from the flu compared with young, healthy adults. This is partly because as people get older, their immune or defense system becomes less effective. Due to their weakened immune system, adults 65 and older are less able to fight infections. In addition, they do not respond to flu vaccination as well as younger people. In other words, vaccines may not work as well in the older adults as they do in younger people. As a result of these age-related features, substantial research and development have led to newer flu vaccines that can potentially provide better immunity or protection in this age group. The availability of these newer vaccines is different in each province or territory. If you are 65 years of age or older, please speak to your healthcare professional to determine which flu vaccine is best for your age group. The effectiveness of an influenza vaccine, which is its ability to prevent influenza illness, can range widely from season to season. This can vary based on a couple of factors, including a person's characteristics, such as their age and overall health. For example, older people or those with immune-compromising conditions may have a weaker immune response to the vaccine. And, how well the influenza vaccines match the strains of influenza circulating in a given influenza season. During years when there is a good match between the influenza vaccines and circulating viruses, it's more likely a person will have good protection from severe influenza illness. In years where there is a mismatch, even if a vaccinated person does develop influenza, it will likely be much milder than if they had not received the vaccine.
One of the most important objectives of influenza vaccination is to reduce the risk of flu-related complications in people who are at high risk. Although the flu vaccine may not always prevent people from getting the flu, studies have shown that it can decrease the rate of these complications. More specifically, flu vaccination has been shown to reduce the risk of hospitalization and severe disease. Additionally, flu vaccination can reduce the risk of a flu-related worsening of chronic health conditions. A 2021 study showed that among adults who were hospitalized with flu, vaccinated patients had a 31% lower risk of death and a 26% lower risk of being admitted to the intensive care unit, or ICU, compared with those who were unvaccinated. Another study found that between 2009 and 2016, Flu vaccines reduced the risk of flu-associated hospitalization among older adults by about 40% on average. Flu vaccination is also an important preventive tool for people with certain chronic health conditions, as the flu can lead to a worsening of the condition itself. As well, among people with heart disease, flu vaccination can lower the risk of some cardiac events, especially among those who have had a cardiac event in the past year. If you have a chronic health condition, getting the flu vaccine can reduce the risk of your condition getting worse. If you are vaccinated and you still do catch the flu, you are still less likely to be hospitalized due to your condition worsening. The influenza vaccine is very safe. Most people either have no side effects or experience local redness, swelling, or soreness at the site of the injection. Some people may complain of body aches and or fever for a day or two following the injection. Serious side effects are rare. For more details on the possible side effects of the influenza vaccine, speak with your healthcare professional or local public health office. Although the influenza vaccine is safe and effective, the following persons should not receive the influenza vaccine. People with an allergy to any of the vaccine components Persons who have had a previous allergic reaction to an influenza vaccine. People who developed Guillain-Barre syndrome, or GBS, within eight weeks of getting an influenza vaccine without another cause being identified. People with an egg allergy can still safely receive the influenza vaccine, as safety data has shown that the risk of having an adverse reaction to an egg-based influenza vaccine is very low. Your healthcare professional may offer to give you the flu vaccine and another vaccine at the same visit. More specifically, during the fall season, COVID boosters will be offered at the same time as the flu vaccines. This is a practical and safe way to be protected against multiple viruses. The two vaccines are given during the same visit, using separate syringes and needles and different injection sites. Your healthcare professional can provide you with additional details. All provinces and territories offer the influenza vaccine to everyone for free. In this way, by preventing community transmission, a universal influenza vaccination approach protects the more susceptible people indirectly. If a large portion of the population, including healthy adults and children, is vaccinated, there will be less infection in the community and, consequently, less chance of exposure to the virus. This will result in an overall decrease in the number of influenza infections we will see during an influenza season. There are several points that are important to remember. First, the influenza vaccine protects only against the influenza virus. Second, it is still possible for a person to contract influenza even after having been vaccinated. But if they do, it will be much milder than if they had not received the vaccine. Lastly, the vaccine will not prevent you from getting a cold caused by other viruses. So, if you get a cold after having been vaccinated against the flu, it does not mean the vaccine did not work. Aside from the influenza vaccine, here are some other steps that you can take to help prevent the spread of the influenza virus. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. Stay home if you are sick. Cover your mouth and nose with a tissue when coughing or sneezing. Wash your hands frequently, especially before and after meals. Disinfect frequently touched objects such as surfaces, keyboards, doorknobs, and toys. Wearing a mask during the flu season, especially if you are 65 or older, 
will help protect you and the people around you against the flu and other respiratory viruses. Let's now summarize. Influenza, commonly known as the flu, is a contagious respiratory illness that can cause mild to severe illness in humans. People 65 and older are at highest risk for serious influenza infection. Influenza in older adults can be very serious, not only resulting in hospitalization and even death, but also can have multiple potentially long-term consequences. If you are 65 years of age or older, one of the best ways to help protect yourself against influenza and its serious complications is by getting immunized against influenza with vaccines recommended for your age group. You can talk to your healthcare professional or local public health office about getting your flu shot.